welcome back to my channel today we're going to do a one dollar patriotic decor stars um, these two star shaped wood plaques from the dollar tree i picked up at christmas time and i shoved them in my americana decor because i knew i was going to want to do a project now i'm going to take these tin stars off of this focaccia looking tag but you can just use a stencil or you can use stickers or whatever you want to create your stars you can print them and hand write them um, if you decide to do the one flag basically um, so all we're going to do is we're going to start off by painting these white just like I kind of think like we do a lot of times um, I am will tell you honestly I don't really like when I paint wood <laughs> I do like to let the wood green show and I like to go more of the stain route but I knew with these particular star shapes that I knew I was going to want them for my Americana decor and I knew that I was going to want to paint them um, if you don't know if you're new around here hi my name is Jerry Ann um, I actually like to keep my Americana decor up from before Memorial Day till after 9-11. Um, the only month that doesn't actually have a patriotic holiday during the summer is August because we have Memorial Day and then we have Flag Day, 4th of July, and then between Labor Day and 9-11, Patriots Day, we, um, or Patriots Day in Boston, I'm sorry, we go ahead and we have like an Americana type of holiday. So it's just something that me, me and my family have been doing for decades just leave it at decades <laughs> but every year I like to create something a little new I like to share it with you um, and this is sort of a craft from my stash as well um, because this is only taking these two stars and just paint we're just going to use any red white and blue paint what I'm going to be using I'll let you know right now in case you're ready to write it down I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm going to use Waverly's chalk paint in crimson from my red and I got a new paint from Walmart which I really like it's a multi-service apple multi-surface apple barrel paint in navy and it's really a perfect blue um, whether it's watered down or not um, and I'll show you what I mean in a little while um, so as you can see from the description, or maybe you haven't seen in the description box, we're also going to do a shading tutorial. So one of these projects is going to be very easy, and the one of them is going to seem a little bit more advanced, but it really is simple. But it's definitely something that you uh, people have been asking for more painting tutorials or more in-depth painting tutorials, and this is going to be one of them. Okay, so now for this particular project, I will tell you, if you have these stars and you're going to plan on painting them or repainting them from Christmas, I should have sanded the edges down. A couple of the edges were kind of rough and kind of tore up my paintbrush. Um, but that's the only thing I wanted to tell you, just the very, very edges, okay? And I'm going to leave them white, the whole painting thing. I'm never going to, I'm not going to wrap my colors around the edges or whatever, but you could if you want to. So after they're all dry, the first thing we do is just take a ruler and we're going to go, this is so simple, it's kind of like, I don't even know why I'm telling you, but we're just going to go from a point to a divot. What I call the divot is the valley between the two points of the stars. I call it a divot. So we're just going to line up every point to every divot that's across its way. Okay. Now, if you do this right, you should get a perfect intersection in the middle. But, you know, it's from the Dollar Tree, so it might not actually line up perfectly. But that's okay because we can fake it with paint in a little while. Now, I am doing this star to look like all of the three-dimensional metal stars that I already have out in my outside decor. I have some that are uh, have the American flag painted on them. I have a, a red one and a blue one that I keep out all year. Um, but this one I actually don't have one like this and I was contemplating like repainting one of my old ones. I have to see if one of them just looks not so great. Maybe I'll give it a paint job. Um, so once you have that all done, then we're going to go ahead and mix the paints. Okay. So what we're going to do first is I actually have some navy, po navy blue paint already on here. I'm just going to add a little water to it. Okay. And I'm just going to make almost like a wash, almost like a stain. And what this is going to do is this is going to lighten the navy blue without making it light blue. 
okay? What it's gonna do is it's gonna make it a little bit more translucent or transparent. So some of the white is gonna show through and it's gonna seem just like a lighter shade. And then when you go to do the shading on the navy blue, we're just gonna go straight from the bottle, okay? Now, my secret tips and tricks is to use a flat brush to use the edges or the tips of the brush to create along that straight line. If you have a shaky hand or you're not steady, you can always use masking tape. There's no shame in doing that at all, okay? Now to make the seam a little bit more dimensional is we're going to put just a lighter shade on one side of the, I guess what would be the peak of the star burst, and we're gonna put a darker shade on the other side. So what I decided to do, as you can see my hand right there telling you, I've decided the light is gonna come from that upper left hand corner. This is important to recognize where your light source would be so that you can figure out where all your shadowing will, will fall, okay? Now that I figured that out, I realized that those two um, sides of those two particular points that land in that divot are both gonna be the lighter shades of those points okay I'm calling each of the five things that stick out points at each of the five indents <laughs> isn't it hard to talk to you and you guys know what I'm saying anyway imagine if this was a three-dimensional star each one of these star points would be a piece of metal folded in half okay so you're going to be want to create half of it in shadow and half of it in light and that's what gives it the dimensionality okay now that i've said that i can tell you that once i've decided where the light source is going to come that's when i realized that the blue and the white that are on that particular in that particular divot are both going to be the lighter shades in that area okay now you don't want to paint the two colors next to each other right away because you can bleed you can cause bleeding acrylic paint especially chalk paint does dry very quickly so you do it you don't have too much waiting around time but you definitely don't want to start painting right next to what you did paint because there's an opportunity you have the the chance to basically smear it you don't want to do that okay so now that I've decided where the light is going to fall which is that upper left hand corner right there you know that this part of this red is going to be on the top towards the sun and it's going to be a bright red now the same with this one we know that the sun is coming from the left and from the upper left hand corner so then the basically the part that faces top and left on the bottom of the red star is going to be shadowy the one sort of area that's sort of not up for interpretation but really it will depend on your actual like your actual light source and how far away it is and how close it is and how much of an angle it's at is that bottom right hand um starburst point <laughs> i still can't know what to call it <laughs> um arm the bottom the bottom right hand leg <laughs> because really you could have the shadow on either side of it and it would still work what what it actually does by moving the shadow is it actually makes the sun go sort of like the difference between 1130 and 930. So they're both up there, but they're just at a little bit of a different pitch. Okay. So that's just my advice there. So you could go ahead and add extra shadows and shading to this side that faces the sun, but there's really no point um, for a beginning for beginning shading. This is this is just good enough. Um, but there would there would probably cast a little bit of shading like where the two sides meet at the divot um that's that would be like a little bit there but we're not going to worry about it you're going to see it's going to still look just as nice um, without that extra shading okay so then the next color we're going to create is um that solid navy blue this is straight from the bottle and um the light blue or the lighter shade of it has already dried so we can go ahead and add it now you can see I kind of created a straight line with the first color and if you could see this paint up close between the chalk paint and the multi-surface paint it almost creates kind of a little wall so it does make lining up the second color easy but I will tell you because the second color is darker if you do happen to go over the line 
on your lighter color, then you can always go over it with your darker color. You can just wait a little while longer and you can tape down that straight line and then you can go ahead and paint your little heart out. Um, but the same thing goes for the red. This was the first uh, red side, so we wanted to make sure it was dry uh, before we went on to this navy blue. Okay, and I love this multi-service paint. It does have such a great feel, um, but just like a little, it gives me a little bit of friction going over the uh, chalk paint, which normally that's what happens with chalk paint. Whenever you paint acrylics over chalk paint, you always get a little bit of friction in your brush. Um, and there was a couple of little like uh, divots in the, the board, like, you know, wood divots. I just want to make sure you fill them in or else the illusion's out the window. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and go straight um, to the shadowing on the red parts. And all we're going to do is we're going to take the crimson and a tiny bit of black. Now, if you're shading or copying a picture um, or you're shading in, uh, you know, from a still life, it won't always, the shadows won't always be created with black. Um, because there is that ambient light, if you're, you know, in a navy blue room and you're painting, you may have tones of blue in your shadows. We're not going to worry about that in this beginner's course, we're, uh, beginner's class, beginner's tutorial. <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and use black, which is just like the standard basic um, shadows, okay? So what we do is we're almost creating sort of a burgundy color or a maroon is really what it is. Red and black is usually maroon. Burgundy has a little bit more purple or blue in it. Um, but what we're doing is we're just going to create some maroon and that's just going to create the shadows. So for this first part, I'm dipping closer to the black. And the reason I'm doing that is just to create the contrast right at the top of the hill and the bottom of the valley. Okay, so basically we're just making the first line area the darkest where it meets the light side. Um, and that's really in life how it would be. Um, how I'm doing this though is that we're going to create sort of a outline of where the colors match. And I'll show you when we get there. But I'm just... Because I'm using this particular um, shade that I'm mixing as I go, I'm going to do both of these triangles at the same time because I want the darkest red to be where it meets the darkest maroon to be where it meets the reds plus where it meets the valley. Okay, so we're going to just basically outline that sort of triangle shape that it makes um, with the darkest of the maroon colors. Okay. And then um, simultaneously at the same time, we're going to be doing both colors, especially want to make sure that that valley, that first valley on the left is going to be the darkest because it's going to sit next to the, the gray of the white arm. So I made sure I did that one first because as we add paint, we're going to choose lighter colors. We're going to start mixing more red into that maroon color to lighten it up. And as you can see, we're working from the darkest area to the edge or to the lightest area. Um, that's what's going to create that shadow, that illusion, or, um, you know, that texture, that feel. That's what it's going to create. Um, there is... This is nothing like Trump Loy, however, <laughs> the, the term Trump Loy is to create a really realistic looking painting. It means to fool the eye in French. And whenever you see like a, a, a still life of a fruit bowl that you feel like you could just reach right out and grab a piece of fruit off of it, that's the technique. So this is just the beginning steps of learning that technique. It's basically taking something that's two dimensional and making it look three dimensional. Now for the last color that we're going to create is basically just going to be gray. How gray? Huh, that's a really good question. So what you want to do is don't really put more black in your white than you're going to put in your red or in your blue in case you have a different color blue that you're using. If you can't find navy blue and you only have royal blue or if you prefer royal blue because some people prefer royal blue to in their Americana decor than navy then you want, can go ahead and add black to it as well. Um, but you don't want to add more black to your white than you're going to add to your other colors. You want them to kind of be the same value, okay? And we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're just going to make the darkest gray right at the line where it meets the other colors, okay? Um, 
basically that's what's going to create that illusion that it's three dimensional. Now, if this seems like a lot for you, trust me, I hopefully that watching me do it will show you how easy it truly is. But if it's too intimidating, I mean, it's just paint. I tell everybody all the time, everybody wants to learn how to paint better, but nobody wants to actually risk their, their precious 20 cents worth of paint. Because <laughs> really, that's all it is. If you do this and it doesn't come out well, you can really just paint over it. And I exaggerate about the 20 cents because maybe it's a dollar's worth of paint. But either way, it's still worth it to just practice. Plus, the star has two sides. So um, you can also practice this on paper if you want to. I definitely encourage you to just get out there and try. The only way you're going to learn if you can do it or to practice it is to do it. I mean, there's really no other way, okay? Now, if, again, you find this into intuitive, the next project is super easy, so that might be more your speed. But honestly, I really feel like this is, I broke it down so that everybody could do it. I feel like it's super easy. You do see that white spot, right? Because I totally didn't see that white spot. And hopefully I'll get that white spot. I'm looking at the actual thing hanging on the wall there, and I don't see a white spot. So I'm assuming I get it eventually. <laughs> But the same thing with this gray triangle is you're just going to make the darkest point right at the edge where it's going to touch the pencil. Um, having the pencil be gray also is a little helpful. So it makes the, light, the line a little bit more forgiving. And the reason I didn't tape this off, I don't paint a perfect line anymore. Not that I really ever did. But the reason I didn't tape it off is because I have this star in real life and it's not perfect. That's not a perfect chisel line um, that's created there. So if there's slight imperfections, it was going to actually give it a little bit more realism. Okay. The only way that this would actually be a perfect crease is if you made it out of paper and only if you are a perfect paper folder. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's that. All right. So you're going to try to do the same thing. Like I said, we did before the darkest shades are going to be where they meet the other edges and then fill it in as you go. Darkest to lightest is the way to go. Now for this one, I could have done, you could do a ribbon hanger. You can add flowers to it. You can put it in the middle of a wreath. You really can. The sky is the limit. And, um, yeah, but I'm just going to put it back on its jute hanger. Actually, this is a different jute cord from a different thing because I want it to be longer. I don't know. But anything would be really cute. Any way you decided to hang it or use it would actually be really cute. And if you do make it, let me know. I really am curious if once you guys learn what you do with it, okay? Now, this next one is so easy. <laughs> um, it's tradition that the flag, not tradition, but I th actually think it's the rules that the flag be presented with the star grouping in the upper left hand corner no matter how you're hanging it that needs to be in the upper left hand corner so there's a hole in this star so we made sure that we made the <laughs> blue square in the upper left hand corner okay now I'm just taking the width of the t the the I said t square but that's not what it is of the square the square is from the Dollar Tree I'm just using the width of my ruler <laughs> to go ahead and create my stripes and then I've drawn that same line down the middle from the top point to the bot to the bottom divot directly under it and then I've just used one of the stripes um, the tops of one of the stripes to create the square that's all and I have recommended before if you're new to my channel you won't know about this recommendation that if you're going to draw a pencil on white chalk paint that you get a pencil with a white eraser this way you don't leave any pink or brown residue behind okay these pencils that I use are mechanical pencils from the Dollar Tree and they work really really well so now this is the easiest part again you can tape it if you want to if you're not if you don't have a steady hand or if you don't trust yourself 100% go ahead and tape away now this um, method I actually have done before I had my channel on a on an H um, that I have that I used I actually created the stars by drawing them on masking tape I know so inventive I drew them on masking tape and then I cut them out this was before the days of the cricket um, but I actually created this and this is one that I keep in my home I use for all my decor um, 
but I thought we could just do it on the star. But I tell you this because the possibilities are endless. If you got some of that really nice um, drop cloth material, used navy blue and burgundy on that drop cloth material, look like a really old flag. And you can make pillow covers, which would be so awesome. You could do a wall hanging, again, so awesome. Now, for this particular um, one that I chose to do this time, I mentioned in the beginning that we're going to take the stars off of that uh, one tag sign that I bought that really had the stars be all jacked up. I bought a couple of extra ones of those tags because, again, if you're new to my channel, I love to recreate decor tags. But up until these tags came out for Americana, they always made the holes so small and I was always drilling new holes to create more proportioned holes in their tags. And when I saw them, I had to just buy a whole bunch. Even though I have a whole bunch of tags still, I had to just buy these because they were perfect. But when I was shopping, I bought this one particularly because the stars were messed up on it and I knew I was going to take them off anyway. So there you go. <laughs> so for this one, we're just going to use the straight crimson. We're not going to have to repaint the white. And we're going to use the blue watered down because we're going to create more of that royal blue look. Okay, so this is just that same watered down navy blue paint that we just used a few minutes ago, all right, for the light side of the blue. I'm using a foam, well, both of them are foam brushes. These are foam brushes from the Dollar Tree in the hardware section because you can get multiple widths. I know that they have them in the craft section now in the very skinny size, um, but I'll tell you these aren't them because I haven't opened those yet. <laughs> so now I'm just creating sort of a watercolor, trying to make it neat make it royal blue. It's very pretty. I almost really want to do like a fake tie dye with some watered down paint. I don't know. I'm just feeling that. I'm feeling it for some reason. <laughs> um, oh, the other trick to painting an American flag. If you don't have an American flag there, what I like to remind everybody is there's 13 stripes. There's seven red, six white. The trick I always remember is there's a red right under the blue square. And that's how you can remember there's a red in the middle and it's right under the blue square. There's 50 stars, but obviously we don't have room for 50 stars. And in proportion with these stripes, which is one of the reasons I made the stripes as big as they are, um, I knew I wanted to use these stars. So what I did was I um, painted this whole red, white, and blue, set it aside for it to dry. I'm taking my uh, Dollar Tree's utility knife. I'm stretching the blade out really, really wide so I can get under it. I wasn't sure how they were attached. This is my first time removing them, but I will tell you guys in case you're interested, it, it's just like a blob of glue. It's actually the glitter glue that they paint there because there's all glitter in there when you flip it over. There's like a little blob of glitter glue um, underneath each one. Um, and I left the glitter glue underneath there because because they glued a big pile in the middle of the star, that's going to help us in the long run to not have to create our own big giant glob of glue in the middle of the star. Um, so when we go to glue them down. So I just took some of this white chalk paint that I had left over on the board and I painted each one of the stars. Chalk paint does dry really, really quickly and it does really stick to a lot of surfaces. Um, but this isn't going to be in weather or anything. Now, People, a lot of people ask me, how do you protect your artwork for outdoors? Honestly, Mod Podge is not the best for outdoors. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't work outdoors, and it works outdoors in a lot of climates. But if it gets wet, it will become milky again, just, just so you know. It's not a permanent, it's not meant to be permanently an outdoor sealant. The best piece of advice I can give you is to pick up some acrylic, clear acrylic spray paint in the finish that you want your project to be done in. So if you want your project to be glossy, you get it in gloss. If you want it to be matte, you get it in matte. Um, I have a can, whenever I do project for outside, I always spray it to protect it, okay? So hopefully you guys, I've answered that. Uh, hopefully anybody has any more questions about it, you guys can let me know in the comments, but hopefully that will help, okay? So now I just cut out the drying time. <laughs> And um, I wanted to show you that um, I'm cutting these with just Dollar Tree scissors, but honest to God, I must have hit the camera. It all got cut off the camera, but you'll kind of see it, but it, you won't see it very well. I apologize. Now I'm just working out the placements. I'm trying to remember, instead of actually 
looking at a actual flag. I was just trying to remember exactly where the placements of the stars are. For some reason, my brain is processing that between each star creates sort of a pentagon area, like a like a blank area that makes a pentagon. So it's kind of like trying to mimic that. Um, but I also wanted to try to make it so that the minimal amount of damage will, I mean, uh, I'll get the maximum coverage with these stars. That's what I meant to say. So all I did was I lined this one up with the one below it. And then I decided where I was going to cut it and took it to the scissor. And then I used the Dollar Tree's gardening shears with the green handles that Sarah Jane recommended. We love them. And I just cut it straight across that, basically that hill to that valley. Um, and then I just glued where the glue was. Now, if you look at this project from the top down, you can see underneath the star. It's not objectionable to me. Nobody's going to be looking like it like that. But if for some reason you are going to put this outside, you don't want bugs to build a nest in there, you can fill that hole in, that crack in with hot glue, okay? Um, and then we're just going to place that one there. And then the other one, I noticed that I will be cutting the tip off. And again, I'm sorry, it's really... I have to hold the scissors really close to me when I cut. Um, you know, I don't really have the hand strength. I need my whole body. So that's why... Um, I had to pull it in so close to me, so I apologize. And this size that we picked out just happens to be perfect with these stars. That's, you know, that's on purpose, I guess. Now, if you want more full coverage and you don't want this, like, painted look, you can go ahead and add a second coat of red, and you can actually go a second coat of blue if you want to. Um, it may make it more navy, but that's entirely up to you. Um, and now we're just going to add the string back. I know we didn't show you didn't sh I didn't show you string in the first one, but um, all we're going to do is poke the string back in the hole we got it in. If for some reason your hole got painted over, you just stick in all the tip of your scissor or whatever um, and just twist it around just to make the hole a little bit bigger. And that's it. And again, you can add this to uh, a wreath. You can hang it outside, inside, upside down, however you want. Well, don't hang it upside down. That's not good. Um, and that's everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you do give this video a thumbs up, don't forget to share with friends and family, anybody who might be interested in making either one of these stars or learning the techniques and the shading and stuff. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. When you do a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And if you guys have any questions at all about either project or either of the techniques, just leave them in the comments section down below. I'll make sure I get to each and every question eventually. <laughs> Sorry, I'm honest. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.